Hey guys, welcome to new session of Oda class. My name is Sushant Srivastava and today we're going to talk about the most important questions of factor theorem. Now guys, this theorem is there in 9th standard and it's one of the beautiful theorem that you can deal with. And this comes, though it, this comes from remainder theorem, but the application of factor theorem is way larger than the remainder theorem itself. So today we're going to talk about two most important questions on factor theorem. And then additionally, we, I have collected one more theorem which is based on factor theorem. So let's see the first the theorem first and then we've got gonna talk about questions okay so the theorem statement is you can transform it in two ways so the first statement is if px is a polynomial whose degree is greater than zero of course and p of a is equal to zero if p of a is equal to zero then x minus a will be a factor of px that is for any polynomial px if p of a is zero then x minus a will be a factor of x provided the degree of the polynomial is nothing but greater than zero and the same statement you can retransform and you can say that if x minus a is a factor of polynomial px then p of a will be zero okay so these are the two statements of the factor theorem let's see the first question which is based on factor theorem now this is little bit unconventional question that i have selected you might not find it in a nine standard ncrt but it's one of the most beautiful question that you will ever come across related to factor theorem let me explain this question first if x minus a whole square is a factor factor of x to the power 4 minus x cube plus ax plus b then find the values of a and b now we know one thing from factor theorem that is if x minus a is a factor of px then p of a is 0 but the problem with this question is we don't have just x minus 1 as factor. In fact, we have x minus 1 whole square as a factor. But anyway, if I say x minus 1 whole square is a factor, clearly x minus 1 will also be a factor. And from this statement, I can say if I say px is given polynomial, which is x to the power 4 minus x cube plus ax plus b. So I can clearly say p of 1 will be 0. Why? Because x minus 1 is factor right so p of 1 equal to 0 will give me one information which is nothing but 1 minus 1 plus a plus b equal to 0 and from here you get a plus b equal to 0 or I can say b is nothing but minus a now this is one information but the problem is I have to get a and b both values but I just have one equation in a and b how do I tackle this because I know that just not just x minus 1 is a factor x minus 1 whole square is a factor so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna substitute this b value in the polynomial let's see what happens so when you do that you get px is equal to x to the power 4 minus x cube plus ax minus a now you can take x cube common from here and a common from here and you'll be left with x cube into x minus 1 plus a into x minus 1. In fact, this whole thing gets factorized and you get x minus 1 into x cube plus a. Now guys notice we already have x minus 1 as a factor but the question says that x minus 1 whole square is a factor that means another x minus 1 should come out from here so if I assume this as another polynomial let's say fx which is x cube plus a according to question x minus 1 will also be a factor of fx x minus 1 is factor of fx and from there what I can say that f of 1 will be 0 and hence you'll get 1 plus a equal to 0 or a value will be minus 1 and if a is minus 1 clearly b value I can substitute it over here and you will get plus 1. So this is how you find a and b value when x minus 1 whole square is a factor or x minus alpha whole square is a factor of a polynomial, okay? Now let's move on to the next question and let's see what is the next question. In fact, next question that I have over here is just not a question. You can take it as theorem as well. And this theorem you can use in different, different questions. So I have one application of this theorem in today's video. So stick with me for the whole video. You will find a beautiful question in today's video itself, okay? So let's see the question theorem that is prove that I, if I eliminate this particular part, it becomes a theorem, okay? Prove that if n is any natural number, then x to the power n minus a to the power n will always be divisible by x minus a. It's a beautiful theorem over here and what I can do is I can take fx as 
x to the power n minus a to the power n. Now, if I substitute x to be a, you get f of a as a to the power n minus a to the power n, which is nothing but 0. And if f of a is 0, if f of a is 0, this clearly tells x minus a will be a factor of fx. factor of fx and if it is a factor of fx then clearly fx will be divisible by x minus a now based on this i have a question in fact there are more theorems which are similar to this so try to look for those kind of theorems and tell me in the comment box did you find those theorems interesting or not let's see the question which is based on this particular theorem so the question over here which I have selected is a really beautiful question and you will see the whole working of this question I will be very much happy how the whole application of that particular theorem works out to be really well in this particular theorem okay the, this particular question so the question is prove that this whole expression it's a huge expression over here is divisible by 1998 now it's a bit deceptive question why I'm saying it's a bit deceptive question because 1998 you can see here and you can see in the power so most of the student thinks that the power has something to do with 1998 but it's not the same way I'll show you how to do this question what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just rearrange the terms if you notice 1901 minus 1938 is nothing but multiple of 37 similarly 1955 and 1992 is also a multiple of 37 so this will get you 37 divisibility let me show you how to do it okay so what i have done over here i have rearranged the whole term this whole expression i have rearranged okay so what i have done i have written this particular here and then 1938 then 1955 and 1901 now, just now we have studied one theorem that is x to the power n minus a to the power n is always divisible by x minus a when n is any natural number. So I'm going to apply, apply over that theorem over here. Okay, so here we have x to the power n minus a to the power n and this will be clearly divisible by x minus a and if you subtract this is x, this is a. So if you go for x minus a, you will get nothing but 54. So this I can say is divisible by 54, fine. Similarly, I can work on this and I can say x to the power n minus a to the power n. So this is x, this is a. So x to the power n minus a to the power n should be divisible by x minus a. And what is x minus a this time? It's again 54. So this is also divisible by 54, right? So if I say the first term is divisible by 54 and the second term is also divisible by 54, can I say the whole thing will be divisible by 54? Similarly, if I rearrange the terms again and instead of using 1938 over here, if I use 1955 and 1955 is replaced with 1938, I'll get another information. Let me show you what information we'll get. So here again, we have x to the power n minus a to the power n and clearly this will be divisible by x minus a and this time x minus a guys is nothing but 37 so i can say this is divisible by 37 and if i go to the second part here also if you see guys this is x to the power n minus a to the power n and this whole will also be divisible by 37 because the difference is nothing but 37 now the first part is divisible by 37, second part is divisible by 37. So can I say this whole thing is divisible by 37. Now if I take this whole expression as n, okay, suppose this whole thing is n, this number is n. So can I say n is divisible by 54 as well as n is divisible by 37. So I can say n is divisible by 54 and 37 and if you have any number divisible by a and b then it will be divisible by lcm of a and b so i can say n is divisible by lcm of 54 and 37 
Now guys, if you talk about LCM of 54 and 37, these are co-prime number and for co-prime number, LCM is nothing but the product of the number. So I can say the LCM of these two will be 54 into 37 and that's where the whole question was tricky that 54 into 7, 37 is nothing but 1998. So you will get N is divisible by 54 into 37 or you can say that's nothing but 1998 and that's how you apply that particular theorem in this beautiful question guys these were most important questions that i did in today's video and if you have understood these two questions or the theorem do like this video if you want more such video do subscribe to oda class i'll see you guys in the next video until then bye bye